to develop the relationship here in Mountain West. We've got 10 on the floor, everybody else with a nice view. Tony Padilla, Michael Greenstein, Durham Gottschall, your officials, and we're underway at the pit. No way to loud here, no way. Back door, Derek Goldstein Jr. has two. That's the amazing thing about it is you know they want to go to Derek Austin early, and they were able to give him a layup at the beginning of the game. Great start for the Boise State Broncos. Number 11 is J.J. Caldwell, a pass first guard. He's got the ball at the top of the key, and he can pull it. Misses it off to the right side. And it'll be Boise State basketball. Boise State in their road blues, a little bit orange and white. Lobos in their home whites, the cherry red and silver. You, know, you, you mentioned Caldwell. He's got 46 assists to just 20 turnovers, so he's the guy that gets them going with the ball in the hands of scores. Dickinson for three. And it's a quick five-nothing lead for boards in the state. Marcus Dickinson, just his sixth three of the season. A solid senior, though. He's a guy that you can rely on at both ends. Great defender, always in the right place, and knocking down an early, early shot for Bucks. Lyle. Not a team that shoots the three very often is New Mexico. They've taken more free throws than any team in the country. And we've got a whistle on the rebound. And it's going to be on 15, Carlton Bragg. You know, an uh, interesting matchup today is Alex Hobbs, number 34, for Boise State, and J.J. Caldwell, who we just talked about. Watch the way those two guys guard each other, and they're both kind of catalysts for offensive product productivity for their team. Dickens in the middle of the lane, kicks it out. Alston, Jessup with 15 on the shot clock. Jessup's the one guy they don't want to give up open looks to on the perimeter. But you know, talking to coach Paul Weir, he doesn't mind giving up three-point shots. He said the reason they beat Wisconsin is because Wisconsin was two for 20 from downtown. They want to make people beat them from this extended three-point line. And it's interesting because the numbers aren't there yet. And there's, speaking of numbers, I think that for three, for number three. So Jessup now with 242 career threes. The Mountain West record is 296 from Jimmer Fredette. Who? Exactly. <laughs> That's the company that he's hanging with. Jimmer did it in three years now. New Mexico has opened up 0 for 5. Dickinson. Brad up top to the board and he pulls it down with authority. Got away with a stumble. They play on. Emily's pleased that conference play is here saying finally, but it's early. As New Mexico on the board. And you have to like Malawatch because he does exactly that right there. He's going to get you a high percentage shot, comes in at 62%. He can knock it down from three, but he's a slasher. Gets to the rim. 8 2 Boise State. A seasoned team, though, this Boise State group. They've all played together for a couple of years. Williams, who just lost that one, the transfer from junior college, but they have some chemistry. It's going to be out of bounds off the Broncos. It'll stay Lobos basketball. You mentioned all the three-pointers from Justinian Jessup. Anthony Dermick is the leader at Boise State, and now Jessup with the one tonight makes it 242 for his career. Barring injury, he should have run the road with the school record, and perhaps maybe even passing the great Jimmer for that. In his own press after another Malawi bucket. Hobbs the floater. Nice. Just another steady player. And that's why you like, you know, to me, Mountain West is a very difficult conference to play near the at or near the top. You know, Boise was picked fifth. The Lobo was picked third. But there's some really good teams in this league. There's no Nevada like it has been the last few years. There's still some very good teams. Both of these teams, in my opinion, will have a play in terms of figuring how this thing ends at the end. Jr., his ability to handle the ball. When you think about the way they play, he's kind of a point guard at 
six foot nine. They play a lot through him, and he delivers the package at the doorstep. And a lot of contact, and that's an offensive foul on Carlton Bragg Jr. That's his second. And moving that three point line back. Coach Weir says the numbers aren't in yet. I want to see if this is going to affect people. Let's see how well they shoot from downtown. We, we want people to beat us from there. Obviously, they don't want to lose. We want to make people try to beat us from behind the arc because he believes that early on, the players haven't quite adjusted to the, the distance of this three-point shot. Boise State five for six from the floor in the early gun. Two, three zone now. They, they catch it in with the steal. Vance Jackson. Might have been a foul there, huh? This team is better served going to the rim. Three for three from two. 0 for four from, from downtown so far. The Lobos. Manigault is in the game. Number one replacing Carlton Gray. And that'll be a foul on the baseline. One thing I like early about the Lobos is the ball is moving around. Look at this. Nice drive there that they get fouled on. But it doesn't happen right away. Ball moving side, top side, then back around. Now you got something. That's how Villanova plays, one of the most efficient teams in the country. They don't attack until that ball moves around, and then they take advantage of the defense that is disabled. And it got well short. Hey, Randy watching from Paris, France. 3 a.m. Randy just closed the bar. Well done, Randy. Jessup has two more. They get 14-6 as Boise State, a blistering 6 of 7 from the floor. Jessup gets a hand on it. Lyle recovers. Lyle pulls for a three. He's got three. They first one of the game for New Mexico. They're now one for five from deep. Jaquan Lyle can get it going from all over the court. He was shooting three game about two hours before the game. He barely missed a shot in his whole entire routine. And right there already, some carryover into the game. Hobbs, Alex Hobbs, and Boise State moving the ball really well in offense. Hobbs, the X Factor, the player to watch. And now the other end, the number one is taking it to the rim. That player possession that Hobbs scored. Who he fake the pass it is Derek Austin Jr. once again. Well, he's a very unselfish player, and that's unusual for a guy that's bringing in a hefty scoring average, 22 points a game. But most of his points come organically within the offense. And again, he's, he's got a high usage rate because they run the offense through him, but he shares. So it's a rotation of about seven for New Mexico as Keith McGee enters. Vance Jackson sits, and Miles at the free throw line. Trying to convert the three-point play, and that's what he does. Vance Jackson, of course, a UConn transfer. Has an excellent scoring skill set as well. But he's got to be a little bit more assertive at times. But they've actually had to have him calm down a little bit because he's so used to taking over games. The three is around and out from Dickinson. Manic off the board. So hi to Caleb from Wollongong, Australia, from Riley Abercrombie's hometown. So, not a good look either. He was off balance. When Jaquan Lyle turned that corner, he stumbled. He probably should have regrouped before he pulled the trigger. So the Broncos have in store for Megan watching from Max, North Dakota. Good Long ball three. movement again. Oh my goodness. Alex Oz is feeling it. Doesn't matter where that line is, if you can shoot from right there, that's a three on anybody's court. He's got a game high seven. He was the sixth man of the year a couple of years ago in the Mountain West. 14 points a game last year. Numbers are a little bit down. Lyle, and that size advantage of a lot of other goals at 6'5", but post him a bit. And he uses that size here. He now has a game high with eight. And that 14 points a game was a Mountain West play for Hobbs. He's picking up where he left off, I guess. I'll watch this deal. Nice guy. Oh. 
That was going to be our Max Rice. And Manico will get two. Max Rice did the right thing, though. Make him earn it from the line. But we'll get, we talked about the Lobos. Make him lift it from this free throw line. If this starts with the ball moving and then the dribble penetration, but now you're looking to find others instead of trying to score yourself. Just the same moment, the transfer from Towson, the kid out of Philadelphia, delivers right where he needs to. Freshman year at Pitt. Two Kevin Stallman seasons at Pittsburgh. They've extended their defense a couple of times. And it's picked up the pace a little bit, which favors the Lobos, and they've gotten their offense going a little bit now, especially in transition. It's got to make Susan feel better. He's home sick. Hope you feel better soon. Depends on who she's rooting for. Well, the Lobos. And a traveling violation. Just a move to speak. You cannot hear a whistle in here. This place is one of the loudest buildings in the country. They call it the pit. We're down below street level, and this is a great atmosphere. It's everything I thought it would be. My first time coming to the state of New Mexico. My first trip here, so check it off the list. 1916 Boise State. 12 minutes, 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Noah Kosov, Tim Scarborough, and Amina Smith, our stadium crew, with you from the pit. 37 feet below street level. And 5,300 feet above sea level. And Derek Alston has it back the other way, left to right for Boise State. Alston with just one field goal attempt. It was a bucket. A couple of freshmen in the backcourt with Rice. Just great ball motion around the perimeter for Boise State. And Jessup has his second three. Rice and Dennis, number 10. Rice, number 12 for Boise. A couple of freshman guards in the game now. And of course, Rice is the son of head coach Leon Rice. Had to travel. Three-point efficiency over his career. Percentage is down this year, but again, it doesn't take much to get a guy like that going. And he's got some open ones, and he's cast them in here in the first part of this game. 21-16 as we approach the 11-minute mark. Bobby George, 25, into the game for the first time. They do it again, George, and it's swatted away. Man. How about Keith McGee, the 6'3 guard, getting up? George at 6'11, getting his shot swatted from behind by a much smaller player. Great dime there, and George has to go up with two hands and just punch that thing. The shot clock winding down. Jessup, no. George, an offensive rebound. Looked like he pushed off, got away with it. Alston for a three, no. Good look. In and out. Couldn't catch it in. And a great job by Manigault to contest that three, though. Strong take to the hoop. And Zane Martin for going to the free throw line. Bill Hayes joining us from Hickory, North Carolina. Christopher Wright pulling for the Lobos. So is James watching from Arizona. So who will win tonight's game? This is how we usually tell whose side the folks in the comments are on. New Mexico, 68% of the fan base. So you can use the hashtag. Boise STVS UNM. So that's Boise STVS UNM. Post your photos on Instagram. Use that hashtag and we'll get them up on the broadcast. We'll take baby photos. We'll take Maybe you're eating dinner watching the game. Take a family photo and let us know what you're eating. I ate at the Frontier today. How was Statistician Frank and also Chelsea, the sports information director for men's basketball here at New Mexico, suggested I go to Frontier if I wanted some. Just authentic Mexican food of the Huevos Rancheros for outstanding. Huevos Rancheros. Outstanding. The corn tortilla underneath, the flour tortilla on the side, the green chili salsa was Now man to man being deployed by the Lobos, trying to turn up the heat. Lost it right in front of us. 
Hobbs just took his eye off of that, trying to make the next play before he caught it. A red turnover for Boise State. They do a pretty solid job taking care of the basketball. Turning it over just 11 and a half times per game. Conversely, their counterparts in white, 16.2. A little high. We talked about that Auburn game where they had 24 turnovers. And that was just a, a, a sloppy game up in New York. But they came back the next night and beat a pretty good Wisconsin team. I saw that again, seven turnover for Boise State. And turning it into offense in Auburn. a two-point ballgame. And on made shots, they break down that roughly run. Hobbs lost it. The crowd is into it. Boston one has been effective. They don't set it up until they make a shot. But they really a careless turnover by Hobbs. And he'll have a seat to regroup himself a little bit. Three being deployed by Boise State. This is to maybe stop some of the dribble penetration. They've been getting a lot of points in the paint here. Look at the pass for the pass, and Zane Martin delivers on the feed from Lyle. Sometimes when things aren't going well for you, you tend to be a little pensive. But so far, he looks like a very confident shooter. He's cast in a couple here early. On the watch, back door. It's J.J. Cormo on the receiving end. The back door is open. And like Amazon, sometimes they deliver to the back door. Hans, too strong. The close games already during that regular season. Georgetown and Villanova. Georgetown and yeah. Villanova. And you know, Villanova shot like 70 some percent from the floor. They did. They played what they call the perfect game. Mm -hmm. And the two things from that game that people will remember is that there was no shot clock and there was no three point line. After that game, they added both of those in NCAA play. Thanks to Villanova being able to kind of slow the game down so much that they wanted to speed it up. They probably wouldn't have won that game had there been a shot clock because they held the ball for a great portion of that game. Right, the Abercrombie is in the game for the first time. 11 in the near corner. He's got his hand wrapped, got injured in the exhibition game. We've got a foul on Zane Martin. This is his first. As Boise State has cooled off, started 9 for 11, 1 for 6 since. 
You think about some of the players who've played in those Final Fours in the 80s, though. Patrick Ewing versus Ed Pinkney in the 85 game. Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler played for Houston in the 83 final that they didn't win. In fact, that team, that Houston team, is probably the greatest team to never win an NCAA tournament. You could argue the Fab Five for two years that Chris Webber and those guys were there. But that, in, that Houston team was dynamite. Jessup, again, buckets. Of course, Keith Smart hit the game-winning three in that Syracuse game versus Indiana. Keith Smart for IU. <laughs> So you read all this stuff in history books. I watched all those games. <laughs> I don't even know how you saw anything. <laughs> standard definition. Black and white. white. And to get up from the couch to turn the channel. How about the rabbit ears so you can get a clear picture? Vance Jackson back in the game. And look, this is where they need to go. Right there. They throw it in there because they know they have an advantage with Brad in the paint. Brad goal as well. Got the height and the nice touch around the basket. Look at Carlton Brad Jr. 16 points a game the last couple of games. Shooting 63%. And he's rebounding the basketball as well. Still two, Boise State. They haven't been there at the line very often, and there's good reason. Coach Leon Rice talked about it. They are one of the top teams in the country not fouling people. So that's one thing strategically. They try to make sure they don't put you on the free throw line. Now, now the splash down from that time. Jessup needs a little bit of room, and he's four or five from three. We send it at the top, knowing that he could light it up, and so far, he has been cash money from downtown. Great delivery. And the third game finishes. Sent it at home. And you can't let him catch the ball in that close if you're crazy. They have Georgia on the floor at 6 foot 11, but so far he's been no match for Carlton Bryant in the paint. The defense now extended on Jessa. Abercrombie hands off to Hobbs, who swings it cross court. Dickinson, nice stop and go, let the birdies fly by, pivot, nice left, Dickinson, he's solid. The ball is sticking in a little bit more than it has been in prior possessions, great job to maintain his dribble. Five in the shot clock. David Hosey gave it up. The three is good for the desperation from the Jake Cole. What a luxury. Jessup. Lobos can take a lead with the three. It's Brad misses in close. Got to be careful already with two personal fouls, getting too aggressive yeah. defensively in the backcourt. Surprisingly that he would do that with the two fouls. Got away with it, though. Jessup. Greg fights for the loose ball, and that will be in New Mexico basketball. And it's interesting, you talked about the lack of depth at the five positions. Greg will go sit down. Now they roll the dice a little bit with him with those two personals. But they just don't have a lot of depth there. Boise State has cooled off somewhat after being 9 for 11. This is everything I thought it would be in terms of flow and intensity and pace of the game. Up things pulling from New Mexico, and we're in a one to one situation. That was a 27-2 foul in Boise State. Well, 
team who shoots 71% from the line. He's going to go advanced analytics with this. New Mexico team, 23.5% of their points come from free throws, 35th in the country. See all the comments coming in. Deanne, we appreciate it. And with the hashtag, go Lobos in the comment section. Remember to use the hashtag 4TSTVSUNM on Instagram and get those photos up on the broadcast. New Mexico has stayed out of foul trouble. They only have three team fouls, but two of them are from Carlton Bryant. Eight on the shot clock. Dickinson, a strong take, and he'll break the line looking for the three-point <laughs> It is amazing what you could do live in Cancun. Where do you go for vacation? Portland, Maine. Albuquerque, <laughs> New Mexico. Josh making sure that his voice is heard for the Lobos playing at home. They've won eight straight conference openers. And this is odd, right? Conference opener before, just after Thanksgiving, not even a full week after Thanksgiving before Christmas. Most conferences won't go into conference play until after the Christmas break. Three the shot clock, got to move. Lyle, got to the game. <laughs> He has been money at the end of the shot clock. Second budget beater tonight. Well, after three minutes to go in the first half, Alston has been quiet. Dickinson the floater off the glass net. to guard that three-point shot. How much you can do defensively. By no means am I comparing him to Kevin Durant. Oh, Jessup gets all of Manigault's shot. Great job by the Lobos to give back. Usually off of a block shot like that, you get a transition opportunity. Austin, the head fake, the dump off to George, you can handle it. They told them to stay down on the head fake. They went for it. That's how. <laughs> Just a great factor most nights. is asking me about Frontier and what I ate, and I told him I had the waivers Rancheros, and he's talking about a Frontier roll. Wow, not a lot of contact there, but you know what they the call pass. on the pass, exactly right. Getting the unfair advantage and getting the deflection. Justin and Jesse, number three, has been on fire here. Four for six from downtown. Six on the shot clock. Nowhere to go. Alston's gonna have to put it up. Good job staying down on the court on the fake. That's the heave it, and it's off the back iron. And George will run the free throw line. So great defense for 30 seconds. And then Alston hit backboard and rim. And George will run the free throw line. That was on Malawatch. George is the line. Two shots for George. Delay, I know. 
They didn't tell me to get the cinnamon roll, but maybe they'll open later. Maybe. Or if they're watching it Frontier right now, it's not far. I walked here for shoot around after Frontier. Maybe someone can bring it over. I've, and I've seen you knock out one of the biggest cinnamon buns ever. I forget what city we were in. Kansas, Kansas City, yeah. Kansas City, yeah. Yeah, but that, that, that way, and you destroyed that thing. We dug it out. None of us, and Christian Barboni, no, Barboni was with us. Took but that one right to the head. None of, none of us thought you would finish that. I think the butt actually weighed more than you did. It did. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was bigger than my head. Going up top in the air. Second separating shot clock and game clock. What a hack. Efficient from both teams. Austin. Oh, around and out. Five seconds. Get a good one. Cornwall, the floater. No, gets it back. No. And that's how we'll go to the half. We are tied at Humble Week because of the construction trade show that I know you'll be attending. So. <laughs> That's why we're starting conference play early. And we begin the second half here, and we're tied at 39. This is my 39th state I've ever been in, so my 39s right on point. Well, you're banned from the other 11, so. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've never been to the bat. Ball places, right? I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest, Tim, knowing you, I'm not surprised you haven't been there. You're, you're not I'm a going. Vegas guy. I'm going. Inside the brand. Using the body in the left hand, soft touch around and out. That's okay though, that's, that's, that's the shot that you want. If you're Paul Weir coming out of the locker room, Greg nursed those two fouls, still just two, so he's in great shape now. So why not go to him? Couldn't cash it in though. The pass hit the bottom of the net, and now the net is caught on the rim. Here's another quiet person. RJ Wood, second leading scorer on the team, number 23. Just two picks. Dickinson for three, he brings the net down. Marcus Dickinson. Marcus Dickinson, the senior, so steady. 17 minutes, got seven points. Big shot there at the end of the possession. And they ran ISO for him around the top of the key, and the help never came. Again, when they score, they get in that 1 2 2 or a 1 3 1 3 quarter court trap. It sped Boise up a little bit. Austin off the glass. And he's got that. The coach Rice Fox, he helps Austin. He uses that long stretch to get to the basket. He's got a leap feel for the game. But you can't teach oh, this length ball. and the strength ball. going to the rim. A big time move, just one dribble and a two step, and he drives. I'm not sure he's Irving with a figure out. George Gordon. That was George Gordon. Look, Dr. J had the figure Dr. J out. for sure. There's long arms and big hands. I think Doc invented it and Gervin stole it. I, I'm partial because I grew up in Philadelphia. Five. Austin the board. Nick Scout here. Austin's used to seeing Scouts. His father, the head coach of the Westchester Knicks of the G League, and not exactly a finger roll, but he has an easy two, and he's got point. I'm going to count that as a finger roll. <laughs> Come but on. You know, the thing is, it looked like you wanted to pass it. Bob's goes through the lane. Jenkinson thought about the three. Austin will force the three. Well, short. Good contest, though. Where to go? Two on three, no matter. They're still going to take it. Vance Jackson is good point. Set things up with 15 on the shot clock. Nearly two and a half gone by here in the second half. Hop skipping a jump off the glass, and New Mexico back in front by a point. Vance Jackson with two. He's actually pretty good defense by Alex Anyway. 
just that he did something like more of a metaphor. Now Alex knocks it away again. Oh, and then lost it on the other end. Fourth turnover for New Mexico. Boise State hasn't converted any into points yet. So far, the Lobo has done a solid job with the basketball. We mentioned just three turnovers in the first half. But you're going to get a few of those when you're looking to run. You can live with it if you're getting points most of the time. I post Austin as Jackson on him uses that basketball. Not exactly the Euro, but he kept that pivot foot and laid it up with the left hand. He may have gotten away with a bit of a travel. But did you see how close he got to the rim? How far away he was? One step, and then he's at the rim. Caldwell. Grabbed the offensive oh. board and misses the putback. Man, that's all right, too. And that has happened in a few games this year, Tim, that he gets the ball in close, yeah. and he's missing the money. And, and really, it's just all him because there's no real shot watch right there. Especially for him at 6'11", he just needs to go up gently smooch that one off the glass. That was well, R.J. Williams, and that's his third, so Robin George will place 23 in blue. George gave them some pretty decent minutes in the first half, had a putback. Well, actually, a couple of free throws. And he and he's giving them size to try to negate what Brad is doing at the offensive end. Nearly four minutes gone by, going back and forth in this second half. Bobo is plus one. Good job. Great ball. Just a great look. And he carries it. That's an unselfish play, the right basketball play. And this talented Boise team coming in here trying to steal one. How do you slow that down then? With them moving the ball so well as Lyle floats it again. Hit the stay in position. And once they started scrambling, they were at a disadvantage. Everybody was recovering, and that's why the ball was able to move so easily. And finally, they were able to squeeze the trigger. But it starts with one defensive breakdown, which leads to multiple defensive breakdowns. Yes. 
so much better when they share the basketball. So many scores, when the net ball starts moving, it's very difficult to stop it off. into the game for the low ball for the first time. Dickens for three in the three. face of Percy. Yes, the Marcus Dickinson. I need more cowbell. Dickinson gives you buckets when you need them. Steady player, he doesn't hunt shots. Manigault wanted that on the post. Instead, it's a bit out of control, Zane Martin. Now Manigault has it to the mid range on the baseline. He brought George away from the bucket. George more comfortable defensively in the paint. Susan likes it, so does Daniel. Michelle pushing for the other way. Maybe Austin can provide something for no. Just yeah, chase it down. Okay, it's gonna be the Mexico basketball. Yeah. 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 And all the low guys are telling them to stay down on the pump fakes all the time. They've done that and they've made it tough. And here's Marcus Dickinson from the way down the top. They will knock that down with the handoff. Not to be outdone inside the arm, but still on the perimeter. Manigo knocks it down. Seesaw battle here. The chess match begins, continues, I should say. Another 2 3 zone being deployed. And this is just to disrupt the flow when the coach likes to make a change when they've given up a few baskets just to give the team a different look. And work there, deep three off the mark. Jaquan Lyle. Just up to the hoop, left hand, right side, and he'll go. That's his lane. Going for the Broncos. And Andrew in the comments, and Lobos take better shots. I'll tell you what, with this conference play starting early, you get one of the tougher road games out of the way. If you're Boise, you can win this game. They to be a better place. They suffered some heartbreakers here. They lost by one point last year here. But if they can survive this game, that could bode well to get off to a great start in conference with a road win. Hayes, three masters and a PhD explains. Don't, this don't encourage Bill Hayes, please. <laughs> point lead for the Lobos. Talk about close games. Last 11 of these games, five point games, seven times. We've had five three point games. Mentioned in the open, the last four games have been decided by a combined 10 points. Fargo leads it off there. He finishes. We talked about the 80s Final Four. That looked like an 80s basketball possession. That 2 3 was packed so in tight. And the Lobo still wouldn't settle for a three point shot. They got the ball back to the rim. Pass on Scott's suggestion for a late night activity in Albuquerque. Should I ask or no? <laughs> it's in the comments. Back to the 2 3, and again, daring the Lobos to beat them from downtown. That's really not their game. That is the Again, that's the second or third time we've seen them throw the ball over the top. Of that zone. What a game. Hard ball pounding Dickinson. Jessup. He helped. And he did a great job not going for the pump fake. Rice the floater. No. Up ahead to Grass. Tangents on the finish. Look at him. Trying to bring all these new players together with seven new players and four transfers. I think they need to play together and continue to play together because we're starting to see them blossom. Obviously, playing in this building helps a lot just in terms of the energy level. If you're tired, you can kind of get over it when this crowd starts building that electricity. 
but more importantly, they, they're, they're starting to develop some chemistry, the communication. Break down that time. Austin Jr. Open. So Austin's got 12. He's two of six from three. But did you see where he had to go catch that ball to shoot, though? That was a good 26-foot shot. Obviously capable of knocking it down, which he did. But they'll live with that. Three-point line has been moved back to the international line. Around and out, Manigault. And a loose ball foul in the rebound. Eric Alston, the personal foul, that's his first. The team's third of the half. So the three-point line moved back from 20 feet, nine inches to 22 feet, inch and three quarters, which is the international line. The NIT had experimented with it over the past two years. Yeah. I like it, though. What do you think? Yeah, why not? Opens things up even a bit more. You know, again, talking about 80s basketball, Leon Rice, the coach, was talking about back in 83, we remember the ACC had the, the three-point line, and it bisected the key, the top of the key. Was about, <laughs> it was about a 15-foot shot. They were giving out three points for that. And people still weren't shooting it. Jessup lost it, got it back. And one of the travel. Into the passing lane is Zane Martin, who transferred from Towson. Three straight state titles at Newman Goretti in Philadelphia. Man, it's been a long time since I've lived in Philadelphia. I've never heard of that school. Oh, Newman Goretti's a guy. Wow. You were there with Simon Drax, probably. Yep, Simon Drax. Jessup for three. Justinian Jessup has six threes. Officially out of that funk from downtown. Justinian Jessup locked in. More importantly, Boise with the lead. A season high for Jessup. One point shy of time to career high. And Mandelbaum lost it. Off of his foot. Boise State back in front, 62-61. Way too much room and a great screen from R.J. Williams. Boise is the type of team that can come in here and win because, first of all, they embrace this crowd. They want to play in this environment. And secondly, they have a team full of veterans that have played together. And you can see their poise despite a very game Lobos team so far. Step back is short for Jessup, and it's Lobos basketball. We think about R.J. Williams, number 23, Juco transfer from a year ago. 16 points a game, 15.8. Two points on just one shot, number 23 for Boise. But nonetheless, his team's still up. That's a luxury to have your second leader score and not score and still be ahead on the road. Jackson, the head fake, called well. Jackson gets it back. in the comments, son of Leon Rice, brother of Max, says that brother needs to get a little bit more aggressive. It says great coaching by Pops, and a great block by Colton Bragg, he lets Austin hear about it. Back the other way, no! Now we got to this one. Austin, and one! As a broadcaster, and certainly as a fan, you love and, and you know, even as a player too, because you don't want you don't yeah. want the officials breaking things up. You want to keep keep the game in the hands of the players. Oh, yeah. Picked up the goals. So that's the third goal for Junior too. Derek out. Austin welcomes the boos <laughs> and quiets them as well. And Candy's pleased with it. Boise stayed up too. This is kind of a, a matchup zone. I'm just going to call that foul from here. <laughs> AJ Dennis. Caught him on the head. We'll put JJ Caldwell to the free throw line. And JJ, or check that, Jaquan Lyle at the free throw line. So we're 13 last year. Got number five from Clay Patterson. Vincent Sornis turns 24 in February. 
Thornton Bragg turns 24 in about 10 days. And what a difference between being 19 and 24. Oh, man. As you're a grown man playing basketball with, against 19, 20 year olds, it's certainly an advantage. And that's why you start to see these mid majors who have juniors and seniors win basketball games against the Power Fives that have a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. Whether you're just a transfer or a grad transfer, either way, you've got some experience and some years on you. Austin swings it. Hobbs won it in the dragon. You certainly know him, Ray J. Dennis. And it's turnover number 11. Possession for Mexico. So we have JJ, Ray J, RJ, and then Justinian Jessup, who I guess we could call JJ as well. A lot of initials in this one. I'm glad you're keeping them all. Doing my best. Noah Gossel, Tim Scarborough, and Rena Smith, our stadium crew. Boise as a coach, too. RJ Bash, Barsh as well, first year assistant. Four in the shot clock, gotta go. Lyle, nice. over the top of Austin. Boy, is that pretty? Corner three now. Loose ball. Dennis has it. Dennis driving baseline. Hobbs for three. It's good. With Vance Jackson flying at him. Alex Hobbs, Marcus Dickinson, veterans that understand their roles on this team. They deliver timely buckets night after night. We've had 10 lead changes this half. Make it 11. Maybe at the free throw. Jaquan Lyle already with 26. His career high 31 against Green Bay. This has been an effortless 26, too. Man. He is as smooth as they come. Off the dribble there, didn't convert, but drew the foul from Austin Jr. And I've always, I, I've liked Jaquan Lyle's game. My good friend L.D. Williams, who lives in Columbus, played at Wake Forest, texted me before the game. He said, you're going to love this kid in person. And he's right back. Just a swing, swing, swing. 10 of 17 from the floor, 3 of 7 from 3. He's made the only three threes for New Mexico. They're 3 of 13 from downtown. Boise State, 13 of 24 from behind the arc. And we're tied at 68. Swing it around. Jessup around and out. The rare miss for the second chance. said between players the coaches understand the respect that they have for each other as Bragg is at the free throw line. So Bragg certainly gets the better of the situation. He gets to stay in the game and gets a couple of free ones. For his team and he never hunts shots. He's averaging 16 a game but they don't run anything for him. It's all effort. We saw that effort on the split there. Unfortunately, just a little emotional, a little too emotional. They cost them. Glad the folks in the comments are keeping it civil. I appreciate you all. <laughs> Under five minutes to go. Ooh, got a Lyle the there. and Jessup got it on the bottom. Gonna be the second on Jessup. Next one goes back to the free throw line to shoot free throws 16 and 17. They average about 25 per game. As this game goes down to the stretch, they may get that because at some point Boise 
may have to start fouling if New Mexico can pull away. But so far, Boise has been hanging right there with him. New Mexico in that double bonus, so they'll be shooting two the rest of the way. Two for two for the free throw line. Nobody in the country takes more three free throws than this team. of Antonio Jackson, the former point guard here for the Lobos. He's ineligible at Texas A&M. Multiple suspensions there to dock the team and finds a home here and a new life on the court. The composition of this team reminds you of the old UNLV. Tarkanian formula where he take a lot of transfer with those Tark took a lot of junior college transfers. But that's the way the game is going now. That transfer portal is full of really good players. Fifth-year guys, guys that even have his double figures. Normally, when you have his double figures, you stay where you are. And now here the whistles are coming. Ever since the as Alston will go back to the free throw line. Ever since the R.J. Williams, Colt Bragg Jr. dust up. The whistles have been fast and furious as the foul is on Bragg, and that's his fourth. But check that on Jackson, his second. Speaking of bodies hitting the deck, don't forget that stadiums are home for Ring of Honor wrestling. You can check out the latest from the ROH superstars and all stadium platforms. Wednesday and Sunday night, 8 and 11 Eastern Stadium. Welcome to the game. Derek Austin. 
Houston now with 20. He's found himself at the free throw line in the last couple of possessions. But he's certainly the guy they're trying to go to. Lyle and Jessup lining up each other. Caldwell, Jackson for a three. It's one. Oh, couldn't get it. Caldwell tracks it down. Just kidding, Jessup had a gift. He lost it. Mexico 0 for 5 from 3 this half. Dangerous pass. Hobbs almost had the interception. And no, I love what the officials did with this game. That could have gotten out of hand. The education earlier. But to their credit, they restored order fairly quickly. And now we're back to playing basketball. Commenters are pleased with the inconsistency of their officiating. Yeah. Martin, turn around, too strong. Bragg had it, lost it. Bragg lost it again. Oh, Austin George on the floor, and it's going to be a foul on Robin George. Austin knocked it away. His legs were kind of in the wrong position for a minute, almost like a, a giraffe on ice. Look at, look at how his legs go here late. And you get a, a 250 pound man falling on your leg, that's always going to hurt. Nonetheless, he'll get a chance for a couple of free ones. Well, Greg Jr., the class of 15 out of high school, the number two player in the state of Ohio. Number one, Luke Kennard. With the Duke now at the Detroit Pistons. I really like Carlton Bragg's game. He's missed a couple of it in close. And he's a very skilled dude. You look at the way he runs the floor. Pretty good hands, too. It's a really good asset for the Lobos. So, on the handoff, that's a foul on zero Zane Martin. And it's going to be one and one. I agree with that call. Out of contact on that handoff. Yeah, he's trying to blast through the handoffs and break it up. He got a whole lot of Alex Hobbs. Hobbs 8 of 14 from the free throw line this season. His first free throws of the evening. Missing the front end, Bragg the rebound. Empty possession in a one-point game. That was a big miss there. But you have to admire the job the Lobos have done on Justinian and Jessup here in the second half. Just eight points after a 16-point first half. 70 seconds to go. This is the man right here. Don't give it up. Go score. Lyle against Jessup. Great defense, but then the whistle at the end. The call of Bella. Have to take a look at the replay. That's pretty good defense, in my opinion. But nonetheless, Jaquan Lyle is going. Great job of staying down. Yeah, he got there. the whistle. Yep, he hit the contact. Because he, Jessup did a good job staying in front of him first, but then on that angle, Lyle did a good job initiating contact. But to me, that's exactly right. Because Lyle initiates the contact, and Jessup is allowed to retreat, and he was in a legal guarding position. That's why, to me, I wouldn't have called that a foul. Looked like the chest was out. Lyle's free throw. And they're tied at 76. The player of the game, the ball, Jaquan Lyle. A lot of New Mexico fans in the comment section. See how this game plays out. Cool 30. That's a career high for Jaquan Lyle. Another tight one between these two, huh? Can't even hear the whistle, but it did blow. Well, 
is on Martin. Again, they're in the bonus. Foul is on Zane Martin. But Tom's back at the free throw line where he just missed the front end. So you mentioned at the top, a lot of tight games being lost in 2018 19. But in 1920 so far, Boise State with two overtime wins. If they can get this one, you can say they're trending in the right direction in terms of the luck. Last year, one in seven in games decided by three points or less, plus two overtime games. Alex Hobbs, the glue guy, with a couple of big free throws right there. Last year, it's Hobbs who lost the ball in the final possession of the Boise State, lost by a point against New Mexico. Up top to Fred. Fred has two. And New Mexico has the lead again. But J.J. Caldwell made that happen. Great delivery. It looked like it did the official signal. We look understand look. the commenters are saying it changed direction, yes. But Jessup could have done that on his own. I just don't see where that ball was touched. But here we go. A break, perhaps, for the Broncos. Ten on the shot clock. Broncos down by a point. Alston, got to put it up. Hobbs for three in the corner, no! And the rebound. And a foul with 2.1 to go. Win or tie the game. Looks like Boise State was a bit unorganized on the offensive end from that last offensive possession. And he's getting two shots here with double bonus. Way short on the first. If he misses, the rebound the call a quick timeout. If he makes this, you make a long pass and then call timeout. Two-point lead for the home team. So the defense should extend to prevent a long pass here. Trying to get it over. Good pass is intercepted. He's on the But can he step on the yeah. sideline? Right in front of Leon Rice. They're going to have to put more time on the clock. But it, it, was, it was a weird situation because it looked like Boise wanted the throw it long, but they didn't have a play drawn up the throw it long. No one was really moving to where they could get the ball. So now Boise State would like to get the ball in the front court anyway. There's a lot of standing around with blue shirts. Let's take a look at Boston had no idea what, what this is like with the clock here. Steps out of bounds. It's going to be about 1.5. Oh, 